Hey, remember dinosaurs? That's right, you don't. Because they all got killed by an asteroid crashing into the planet. Whereas humans might have just figured out how to avoid similar fate through a successful mission in September of 2022. The mission that you might still remember, and the video from which you see right here. The now famous DART impact. Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And it's now been exactly a year since the end of the mission, and during that year, quite a few really intriguing and somewhat unexpected discoveries have already been made by several researchers by essentially studying various emissions coming from the asteroid following the impact from the probe. In the process, discovering at least one mystery we currently cannot answer. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss Dark Mission once again, focusing on some of the recent discoveries that, to some extent, surprised everyone, and also focus on some other important stuff that was discovered in the last few months. But in case you're not sure what exactly this is, here's a 5 second review. In order to test if you can actually redirect an asteroid before it hits the planet, NASA launched an interesting spacecraft that was supposed to crash into the asteroid at very high velocity. And in order to test the effects of the collision, they actually picked a double asteroid, or essentially an asteroid that had its own tiny moon. This way, by nudging the moon, it becomes possible to measure the effects of the collision by seeing the changes in the orbit. Here's a rough representation of this particular system, based on the radar scan from a few years ago. And well, on September 27th of 2022, it smacked right into this rock, producing the plumes you see right here. Intriguingly, it was extremely precise as well. Despite 10 months of travel, and only approximately 50 minutes of trajectory corrections, it missed its target by only approximately 25 meters, or 82 feet. As in, it still hit the rock, but just not in the precise location where it was supposed to hit. And the first thing that happened, and something that surprised everyone, was a huge amount of ejecta produced as a result. It actually turned this object into a comet for a couple of months. And here's actually a really cool picture from the Hubble Space Telescope. Every one of these tiny circles represents one of the boulders released from the asteroid. And these are some of the least luminous or some of the faintest things we've ever seen in the entire solar system. And so at least 37 rocks have been discovered in this image, anywhere from 1 to maybe 7 meters across. But each of them moving away from the asteroid relatively slow, approximately 1 km per hour. We'll come back to these rocks in a few minutes, because they might be a solution to one of the problems here. And so all of this suggested that this huge impact produced a tremendous amount of ejecta, way way more than anyone expected. In some sense serving as a kind of a rocket engine, pushing the rock even more through the process of enhanced momentum. And although at first it wasn't clear how this was possible, some of the experiments we discussed previously tried to recreate this right here on Earth, in the process discovering that this is basically a kind of a momentum transfer, where the impact from the collision suddenly transfers the momentum to all of these rocks, which one by one escape the asteroid, transferring momentum to their partners and continuously emitting more rocks. And so this somewhat minuscule collision, that was supposed to change the orbit just a little bit, instead changed the orbit by approximately 2%. Previously, single period here was about 8 hours, it was decreased by about 33 minutes. Whereas the expected value of change was less than 1 minute, so the actual physical change was quite dramatic. And the main conclusion from every paper in the last few months is of course that this is a very effective technique. Assuming we can find an asteroid before it hits planet Earth, we have a very high chance of redirecting it in order to prevent the same fate as the dinosaurs. And this is probably the most effective method we have so far, even more effective than a nuclear explosion. You can actually find out why nuclear explosions are not very effective in one of the videos in the description. But for the past year or so, there was quite a lot of data collection and quite a lot of analysis of what's actually happening around the asteroid. Something that was then compared to other similar asteroids we got to visit, for example Bennu, telling us a little bit more about the types of objects these are. It's actually kind of wrong to call them rocks, because they're definitely not rocks. These are really more dust balls, very loosely held together by gravity and potentially static forces. For example, when OSIRIS-REx spacecraft that's going to be returning to Earth really soon approached Bannon really close, landing on the surface, it ended up sinking into this dust by up to 2 meters. So there is really no hard surface here anywhere. It's not a solid chunk, 
is just rocks barely holding together. And because of this, when an asteroid spins really fast, and many do, they tend to actually throw some of these rocks into outer space. And the recent data confirms that Didymus is definitely doing the same. It's actively throwing out a lot of materials into space with millions of tiny particles orbiting around the asteroid and its moonlet Dimorphos. And though some of these rocks may become smaller asteroids, a lot of them get deposited on the surface of Dimorphos, reshaping it over time. But here we also have to remember the effects from the Sun. The solar radiation pressure is actually pretty strong, and it tends to push these objects away from the orbit, especially if they're much smaller. One of these more powerful effects, known as the Yarkovsky or Europe effect, produces a lot of pressure on the asteroids, especially as they start spinning faster and faster. In this case, this is actually a result of various types of solar pressure on different parts of the asteroid, which as they heat up, start to emit different amount of photons, pushing the asteroid in one direction or another. And over time, this can either change the orbit of the object, it can actually push it away in a different direction, or in many cases, make it spin even faster. And at some point, if it spins really fast, it can basically completely fall apart. Here's one asteroid that fell apart, and this was directly observed in 2013, seen right here. And so even though here Didymus and Dimorphos appear as rocks, in reality they're a lot more dynamic, they change their surface quite a lot, and they also spin fast enough to have dramatic effects on each other as well. But when it comes to that collision, the moonlet Dimorphos, based on the observations of brightness, it was recently discovered that it most likely lost approximately half a percent of total mass because of that collision, with all of this being emitted through these very powerful jets. And so it was really this ejecta that basically produced all of the important effects observed in the last few months. But there are still some mysteries, and this is actually from the new study. Intriguingly, discovered by a science teacher when he was looking at this asteroid with his students. And so here, by looking at the system just a couple of months later, they discovered that it seems to actually have changed the orbit even more. Instead of 33 minutes, it seems to have shrunk by at least one more minute, a change of 34 minutes, which suggested that something else is causing a continuous slowdown of the orbit of Dimorphos, with the process even going on after the ejecta and the cone were completely gone. But here, exactly what's causing this is not clear just yet, although there are two main propositions. One of them is maybe in relation to the way that things orbit. Maybe the moonlet is tumbling after being previously tidally locked to the main body. In other words, it's librating like a typical spinning top. Although tumbling is supposed to produce somewhat random orbits, not actually decrease the orbit by such an exact number. And so there's maybe a better explanation involving those rocks I showed you previously. Because all of these rocks that escaped at first may now be slowly coming back depositing on a surface, and as they fell back to the surface, they slowed the orbit even more. Which could be actually going on for the next few months, and should be even visible after one more year. But exactly what's happening here, and why the orbit changed even after a few months, is most likely going to remain a mystery for at least some time. But in 2027, we're going to have a probe visiting this area, investigating everything in quite a lot of detail. The ESA's HERA mission, is going to arrive here in a few years in order to answer every major question. To some extent, concluding this mission once and for all, but also helping us feel a little bit safe when it comes to extinction events. And that's because of the major success of this mission and because of everything that's been learned so far. But as of today, there's really nothing to worry about when it comes to asteroid collisions. No dangerous asteroid known to us is going to collide with the planet for at least 150 years. And we've discussed some of these previous statistics in one of the videos in the description. And so definitely a really cool mission, a really important analysis, and of course really important conclusions, but still some mysteries we cannot answer. Basically here, even though most scientists expected a tiny bit of change, the results were just completely mind-blowing. But why exactly all of this happened the way it happened, we're probably still going to be unable to answer until the HERA mission arrives in 2027. But until these future discoveries, Check out some of the previous videos on the topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership 
or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.